Hello, welcome to the Monday, May 3rd, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. Just about a week after we had this critical new vulnerability in WebLogic, uh, SAP security company Onapsis released a summary of some attacks they are seeing against, well, uh, Oracle competitor SAP using a set of new exploits. Now, none of the vulnerabilities being targeted here are new. It's actually not so much uh, vulnerabilities in the classic sense that are being exploited here, but more misconfiguration in the SAP gateway and messaging system. Essentially, the main issue here is that the systems implement access control lists. These access control lists need to be properly configured. If they are not, then you may allow outsiders to actually execute code on your systems. So Anapsis' advice is review these access control lists, make sure they are properly configured, and they also offer a snort signature to detect if someone is already exploiting any weaknesses. And Cisco this week released a number of patches. Most interesting is a critical patch for the Cisco Nexus 9000 series fabric switches. These particular switches are suffering from a default SSH key vulnerability. So essentially all of these switches are accessible via one particular SSH key that is stored within these devices. It's the same key for all devices. Interestingly, uh, this vulnerability is only exploitable via IPv6. And it's about two months now that CoinHive, the website that sort of popularized the idea of JavaScript-based crypto jacking, shut down its service. And Malwarebytes used this as an opportunity to take a look at what's currently going on with crypto jacking. Well, uh, probably not a big surprise, but there is still an awful lot of CoinHive code out there. It's no longer functional in the sense that it no longer actually produces coins. But of course, the JavaScript is still running on plenty of websites that have been infected in the past. And then there's also Crypto Loot, which is is a competitor to CoinHive and has also been around for a while. So of course they're taking over now some of the market that CoinHive left behind. But overall Malwarebytes does observe that there hasn't really been sort of a big campaign recently in order to actually infect new websites. And then of course, sort of the other side of the coin jacking, which means servers that are being infected like routers. And we have seen this last weekend with WebLogic servers. Well, uh, that is still of course uh, going on, but probably because of sort of the overall downturn of in particular the altcoin market, which is usually what's being mined by these crypto jacking operations. There hasn't really been a ton of interest in really sort of developing a lot new techniques in order to spread coin miners. And ESET Security has a write-up about some vulnerabilities that they found in D-Link wireless cameras. Uh, these vulnerabilities were originally discovered in the first half of last year and reported to D-Link. D-Link did release a partial update end of August last year that at least fixed a plugin that had some problems, but the remaining vulnerabilities remain unpatched. Two sort of big groups of vulnerabilities here that affect these particular cameras. First of all, the communication between the camera and the cloud, and then the cloud and the user actually reviewing the footage is only partially encrypted, allowing the attacker to essentially play man in the middle. Also, and that the second vulnerability that was actually patched, the plugin that uh, gave users access to the camera via their browser, it also implemented an 
open HTTP port that any application on the user's system could actually access. Now, other vulnerabilities include that, for example, firmware updates are not properly validated and an attacker could inject an invalid firmware update. Also, the camera attempts to expose itself to random access from the internet by sending a respective universal plug and play command to the firewall. This, of course, is relatively easily fixed by disabling universal plug and play in your firewall. Firewall. And then I'm glad to be part of the Secure Repairs Initiative. Uh, this is an initiative of a number of uh, security people trying to promote the right to repair initiatives that have gained some steam in uh, recent months and years across the country in order to promote legislation that would actually do allow end users to maintain their own equipment. If you're interested in learning more about this initiative, I'll leave a link to it in the show notes, but it's securerepairs.org, S-E-C-U repairs.org. And that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.